Is good afternoon. Is the start scheduled start time of the House Committee meeting? Please take your seat. The I call to order the meeting of the House Committee. Item one on the agenda: confirmation of minutes of meeting. Minutes of the thirteenth meeting held on the nineteenth of February, twenty twenty one. The minutes have been forwarded to members before the meeting. So far, no members have. Uh, any comments on the minutes? Can I invite members to confirm the minutes, please? Thank you. Minutes confirmed. Item 2 on the agenda matters arising. Report by the Chairman on her meeting with the Chief Secretary for Administration. I've already conveyed to Mr. Michael Tan's concerns. And, uh, and, and uh, I've already conveyed uh, various uh, issues uh, and concerns raised by members at the last meeting. The Chief Secretary of Administration um, informed me that um, there will be a number of bills to be t uh, tabled at the council meeting on the 34th, 24th of March for first and second reading. He would like uh, the House Committee to consider all these bills as soon as possible. Having considered the schedule of the House Committee, I propose to call a regular meeting of the House Committee on the 26th of March. Please note that, members. So on the 26th of March, at the House Committee meeting, we will consider all the uh, bills um, introduced into this Council on the 24th of March. Members, please note that. Thank you. Item 3 on the agenda, business arising from previous Council meetings. Legal Service Division reports on bills referred to the House Committee in accordance with Rule 54, Bracket 4, 1, Arbitration Amendment Bill 2021. Can I invite the uh, legal advisor to take us through the bill briefly, please? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The paper number is LS 38 stroke 20 to 21. The bill seeks to amend the uh, arbitration ordinance to give effect to the supplemental arrangement between the mainland and Hong Kong for mutual enforcement of arbitral awards. So the uh, so if um, this um, uh, arbitral awards are made uh, uh, under the reference mainland ordinance, then it will be enforceable in Hong Kong. Uh, the other purpose is to uh, impose certain restrictions on the um, execution of such awards here in Hong Kong. Now the legal profession uh, and reference um, part circuits have been. Uh, consulted, they welcome the uh, the propo the um, bill in in general, and then the panel on administration of justice and legal services uh, was briefed at this meeting on the twenty seventh of January twenty twenty one on the supplemental arrangement and the proposal to amend the revenue ordinance. Uh, members have raised no objection to these uh, proposals. Now, on how the um, interests of the uh, different parties to the arbitration could be protected, the Legal Service Division has sought um, the information from the administration. The administration has said that um, under the current um, uh, arbitration ordinance and the High Court uh, ordinance, there are already provisions to ensure the um, the ar arbitral awards are executed properly and then uh, creditors will not be given double benefits. So, depending on whether members have any views on the arrangement, we have actually considered the bill. We believe that uh, uh, the drafting and legal aspects of the bill are in order. Thank you. Members, do you wish to set up a bills committee on the bill? No. Number two. Employees Compensation Amendment Bill 2021. Can I invite the legal advisor to take us through the bill, please? Briefly. Thank you. It's paper number LS39, stroke 20 to 21. The bill proposes to amend the Employees Compensation Ordinance to extend the coverage of employees' compensation to the situation where an employee sustains an injury or dies as a result of an accident when commuting to or from work during the period of extreme conditions that arise from a super typhoon or other natural disaster of a substantial scale. The administration briefed the panel on manpower on the 7th of January this year. Members in, are in general in support of the bill of the proposal, uh, we have considered uh, we have not identified any legal or drafting issues with the bill. Members, do you wish to set up a bills committee? 
Dr. An Chang Chung-Tai proposes Bill's Committee. Uh, any members joining? Mr. Vincent Zhang. Okay, clerk, please uh, circulate papers. Three, Road Traffic Amendment Bill 2021. Legal advisor, please take us through the bill briefly. Thank you. Uh, it's paper number LS40-20-21. to The bill seeks to amend the Road Traffic Ordinance. to expand the scope of animals protected, to include cat and dog, so that uh, if there's an accident and uh, damage has been caused to a cat or a dog, then the driver must uh, stop and comply with certain requirements, that is, to provide information to the traffic officer or uh, report the accident. If the bill is uh, passed, it will commence um, six months after the gazetto of the bill. The administration explained why there's uh, this six months period because it will allow the administration to conduct publicity so members of the public, in particular drivers, could be made aware of the new legal requirement. The uh, public was consulted uh, between July and September 2018. The, the majority of the respondents supported the proposal. The panel on food safety and hygiene. Hy uh, on food safety and environment, Hydro also consulted on the 8th of May. Members have no objection, and we have not identified any illegal and drafting issues with the bill. Members, do you wish to set up a bills committee? Um, Mr. Uh, Harry Gary Chen proposes a bills committee. Ms. Dr. Chen Chong Tai and Lux, Ms. Elizabeth Quad are joining, so clerk, please circulate paper. B. Legal Service Division report on subsidy legislation. Um, gazetted on the 19th of February 2021. Legal advisor, please. Thank you. The num paper number is LS 37 stroke 20 to 21. The report covers four items of subsidy legislation. The first two have to do with regulation of dangerous goods. LN 20 says that uh, the assess out the licensing regime for the manufacture, storage, conveyance, and use of DG as well as the requirements for the packaging, marking, and labeling of DG. This is to replace the uh, existing uh, general regulation. So as to align the existing uh, regulatory framework with the amendments to the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. Uh, members could refer to paragraphs 2 and 3 of the report for the details. LN21 amends the dangerous uh, goods application and exemption regulation. This is to specify circumstances uh, for the storage conveyance and use of DG, and uh, so there are also exemptions to be provided. Members could refer to paragraph 4 of the report for details. On the commencement date, uh, uh, they will come to operation on the day uh, to be gazette, appointed by Gazette. Thank you. Members, for LN20 and 21, uh, do you wish to set up a subcommittee? Please continue. Next, LN22. Uh, this uh, order is to amend Schedules 1 and 3 of the Protection of Endangered Species of Animals and Plants Ordinance. This is to give effect to the latest amendments to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Uh, this is about uh, um, you know, making additions, deletions, or amendments to the list of uh, endangered species uh, that, that covers uh, uh, different uh, types of animals, such as sea cucumbers and so on. And also on the import, export, or re-export of these uh, protected species, uh, there will be a need for um, permits uh, control. The LN will come into operation on the 30th of April this year. Thank you. On LN22, members, do you wish to set up a subcommittee? Please continue. Next, LN23. This is to amend the uh, Schedules 1 and 2 of the Toys and Children's Product Safety Ordinance. This is to update certain safety standards for goods, toys, and free classes of children's products. The LN will come to operation on the 1st of October this year. 
for LN23 members, you wish to set up a subcommittee? No. C. Legal Service Division report on subsidy legislation gazetted on the 20th of on the 23rd of uh, February 2021. Legal advice, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, it's paper number LS 43 stroke 2221. This report covers seven items of subsidy legislation, all to do with prevention and control of disease. For these seven items, they are to extend the expiry date of seven regulations from the 31st of March 2021 to the 30th of December, uh, September 2021. And uh, these regulations co include uh, the compulsory quarantine of certain persons arriving in Hong Kong, a disclosure of information, um, you know, regulation on business and premises, prohibition on group gathering, regulation of cross-boundary conveyances and travellers, and also uh, the wearing of masks regulations. For LN28, it also relaxes the number of persons constituting a group gathering from more than two to more than seven, uh, more than four. The uh, L Airlines have come into operation on the 24th of February. There are no legal or um, drafting difficulties identified. Thank you. So for Airlines 24 to 20 uh, to 30, they have to do with prevention and control of uh, disease. Uh, do you wish to call up on the matter? Well, Dr. Cheng proposes that we consider these items. So I propose to refer these items to the subcommittee on subsidy legislation relating to the control and co uh, prevention and control of disease. Any objection? No, then I'll refer it to the reference subcommittee then. For items, uh, for elements under items uh, 3, B and C, tabled at, at the council meeting on the 24th of uh, February, the deadline for amendment is the council meeting on the 24th of March. If there is any extension, it will be extended to the council meeting on the 21st of April. D, Legal Service Division Report of Subsidy Legislation Gazetted on the 24th of February 2021. Legal advisor, please. Thank you. It's paper number LS44, so 22 to 21. That's LN31. Made under the uh, Public Revenue Protection Ordinance. So this has to do with the increasing the rates of first the first registration tax for private cars and annual license fees. Uh, there will be full legal effect uh, uh, for this order. That means before the relevant uh, appropriation bill is passed by the Legislative Council, then by LN31, the uh, proposal announced by the Financial Secretary in the budget speech delivered on the 24th of February will come into effect. This uh, proposal is to increase the rates of the first registration tax for private cars by 15% and the annual license fees for private cars and electrically powered passenger vehicles by 30% re, uh, respectively at 11 a.m. on the 24th of February. Now this is, uh, uh, this airline is a temporary measure. The longest um, validity period is four months um, from the commencement of the order. Now if the order ceases to uh, be in effect and is not replaced by relevant uh, bill, then for the um, rates, the tax and uh, fees paid in excess, they will have to be reimbursed to those who've paid these fees and taxes. Now, the uh, bill received its first and second reading on the 24th. Um, well, the, the bill will be considered, will be receive its first and second reading on the thir uh, 17th of March, and then the House Committee will consider it at this meeting on the 19th of March, where we are still studying the uh, legal and drafting aspects of the order. Now, uh, Mr. Shu, Shu, Shu proposes a subcommittee. Mr. Frankie Ying with Dr. Chang Chung Tai um, uh, are joining. So, Clark, please uh, circulate the reference paper. Now, if I may remind members, the deadline for making amendments to this item is the council meeting on the 24th of March. If there is an extension, it will be extended to the council meeting on the 5th of May.
就二零。Item four, advance information on business for the council meeting of the 17th of March 2021. A government bill, first reading and second reading, debate to be adjourned. Public offices, candidacy, and taking up offices, miscellaneous amendments bill 2021. The House committee will deal with the above bill on the as the meeting on the 19th of March. B government motions. One, proposed resolution under the Employees' Compensation Ordinance to be moved by the Secretary for Labour and Welfare. Two, proposed resolution under the Pneumoconiosis and Mesothelioma Compensation Ordinance to be moved by the Secretary for Labour and Welfare. Three, proposed resolution under the Occupational Deafness Compensation Ordinance to be moved by the Secretary for Labour and Welfare. Will the legal advisor please walk us through the three motions briefly? Thank you. The reports are set out in LC paper number RS 42 2021. The three resolutions are for raising the compensations or 18 items of compensation under the three ordinances, including the minimum compensation for deaf and minimum compensation for monthly caring costs. According to the mechanism, these items will be reviewed every two years. If passed by the Legislative Council, the increased amounts will come into effect uh, on the uh, for on the fourteenth uh, uh, of um, March, and also the uh, percentage increase will uh, ranges from uh, some two percent to eighteen percent. Do any members require a bills a committee to be set up to follow up the resolution? If not, the Government will uh, move the bill on the council meeting on the March of on the seventeenth of March two thousand twenty-one. Two proposed resolution under the um, public finance ordinance to be moved by the Secretary for Financial Services and Treasury. LC paper LS forty-five slash twenty to twenty-one. It is for approving the votes on accounts. Some uh, two hundred seven two hundred seven billion four hundred seventy-eight million and five hundred thirty thousand. That is for to enable the government to carry on its services between the start of the financial year on the 1st of April and the time when the Appropriation Ordinance 2021 comes into operation. The administration does not expect the Appropriation Ordinance 2021 to come into operation before the 28th of April. That's why the resolution is moved. The amount of the funding on accounts is equivalent to some 33 percent of the total appropriation under the Appropriation Bill 2021. That's all for my report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Legal Advisor. Do any members require that a subcommittee be set up concerning the above uh, resolution? If not, at the Council meeting on the 17th of March, the administration will move the relevant Resolution C. Members' Bill. First reading and second reading. Debates to be adjourned. What works? What works? Regulations Amendments Bill 2021. The House Committee will deal with the the draft bill as moved by uh, Ms. Alice Mack on this meeting uh, on the 19th of March. Item five. Reports of Bills Committees and Subcommittees. A. Reports of the Bills Committee on Sex Discrimination Am Amendments Bill 2020. I invite the Chairperson, uh, Ms. Alice Mack, to give us the report. Chair, the bill was introduced by the Administration as the request of the Bills Committee on Sex Discrimination Amendments Bill 2018. The object of the bill is to amend the Sex Discrimination Ordinance to render it unlawful for a person to harass a breastfeeding woman. The Bills Committee has completed scrutiny of the bill. Its deliberation has been set out in a written report. Members' concerns include the protection offered by the bill and its scope, whether the protection applies to the new specified scope introduced to the Sex Discrimination Ordinance by the Discrimination Legislation Miscellaneous Amendments Ordinance 2020, and the upcoming promotional and publicity work of the Administration and the Equal Opportunities Commission to enhance the public's understanding of the major provisions of the bill and the discrimination legislation miscellaneous amendments ordinance 2020. The administration will propose amendments to the bill to further amend the sex discrimination ordinance to replace references to sexual harassment and sexually harass by harassment 
and harass in the new provisions, which are sections 23A, sexual harassment at workplace, and 39A, sexual harassment by clubs, added by the discrimination legislation, miscellaneous amendments, ordinance 2020, such that relevant provisions of the amended sex discrimination ordinance would apply to both sexual harassment and harassment of breastfeeding women. Members do not object to the proposed amendments. The Bill's Committee supports the resumption of the second reading debate on the Bill. The Administration has indicated that the second reading debate on the Bill will resume as the Council meeting on the 17th of March 2021. Thank you, Ms. Alice Mack. I remind members for giving notice to move amendments to the Bill. The deadline is Monday, 8th of March. So, thank you. B. Report of the Subcommittee on Insurance Amendment Ordinance 2020 Commencement Notice and Insurance Special Purposes Bill Business Rules. Uh, can I invite uh, Mr. Wang Kwong, Chairman of the Subcommittee, to give his report, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. One of the two pieces of subsidiary legislation seeks to appoint the 29th of March 2021 as the day on which the Insurance Amendment Ordinance 2020 that provides for a regulatory regime for insurance-linked securities, ILLS, um, to come into operation. The other piece seeks to prescribe certain restrictions on the sale of ILS. The subcommittee has held one meeting with the Administration and the Insurance Authority, IA, and has completed a scrutiny work. Members have no objection to the two pieces of subsidiary legislation. As the ILLS is a complex investment product with high risks, members have stressed the need to put in place sufficient measures to protect ordinary retail investors, in particular to prohibit the repackaging of ILS into other types of financial products for selling to retail investors. Members also discussed the division of work among the insurance authority and other financial regulators under the regulatory regime, as well as the development of the ILS market in recent years. The committee will not propose amendments to the two pieces of subsidiary legislation. Members are invited to note the deliberations of the subcommittee as detailed in this report. Thank you, Mr. Wang Ting. The two subsidiary two pieces of subsidiary legislation vetted by considered by the uh, by the committee uh, the expiry the deadline to move amendments will be the 10th of March, Wednesday. Item 6, position on bills, committees and subcommittees. As the 25th of February, Thursday, there are six bills, there are in action six bills, committees and three subcommittees under the House Committee and 10 policy subcommittees under panels. On the waiting list, we have six policy subcommittees pending activation. Item 7, paper of the Committee on Rules of Procedures, review of the Rules of Procedure and House Rules, first batch of proposed amendments. I invite the Chairman of the Committee on Rules of Procedures, um, Mr. Tung, Mr. Paul Chair, to give us a report. Madam Chair, since the commencement of the 2020 to 21 session of the Sixth Legislative Council, LESCO, the Committee on Rules of Procedure, CROP, has been examining proposals submitted by members to amend the Rules of Procedure, ROP, and House Rules, HRO. Apart from some proposed amendments that require further study, CROP decided to take forward the remaining proposals and invite members' views on the three least proposals in three consultation exercises. Following the consultation, CROP agreed to submit to the House Committee, HC, for endorsement the first batch of proposed amendments receiving sufficient support from members divided into eight groups. Proposal 1, to specify that if the President of LESCO, the President, considers the sanction under ROP 45 bracket 2 inadequate in dealing with the grossly disorderly conduct committed by a member in council and a, a committee of the whole council, the Finance Committee or HC in a single instance or multiple instances, the President may name the member a motion 
will then be moved by the President's deputy for the Council to decide without debate or amendment whether the member should be suspended from the service of LESCO. If the motion is carried, the member shall be prohibited from participating in all business of the Council, including all meetings and handling of complaints, for the period specified in the motion. The remuneration during that period will be withheld on a pro rata basis subject to the relevant legislative amendments being passed. While an overwhelming majority of members consulted did not support putting in place an appeal or objection procedure, this would not preclude the President from exercising his powers and discretion under basic law, the laws of Hong Kong and the ROP, to ensure that the relevant proceedings comply with the principles of procedural fairness and the rules of natural justice. Proposal 2. To specify under ROP time limits on debates on various types of motions in council and a speaking time limit for members in the debates. The President, as in the past, may exercise his discretion to specify time limits for individual government bills and members' bills. Proposal 3. To specify under ROP the powers of the committee chairman in office to deal with normal business prior to the election of the committee chairman for a new session, including deciding on the date and agenda of meetings. Proposal 4. To fine-tune the procedure for the adjournment of debate in the Council and specify that ROP 40 bracket 1 would not apply to debates on certain motions. Amendments with substantially the same terms as ROP 40 bracket 4 are also to be made to ROP 40 bracket 1. Proposal 5. To amend certain rules in ROP to prevent the abuse of procedures and enhance operational efficiency. Proposal 6. To amend HR 22P to specify that the procedure for moving of motions to express views or stance should be applicable to only panels and subcommittees appointed by HC or panels to study policy issues, but not to other committees such as bills committees and subcommittees on subsidiary legislation. A notice period of two clear days will be required for moving such motions. Proposal 7. To specify that members' motions moved under BL 73 bracket 5 and bracket 10 and section 9 of the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance Cap 382 at a council meeting should be dealt with after members' motions not intended to have legislative effect unless HC's prior endorsement for according, for according priority to the debates has been obtained. Proposal 8, the last one, to amend certain rules in HR to facilitate the smooth operation of HC and better reflect the current practices of HC. The Madam Chair, the eight groups of proposals are detailed in the paper submitted by CROP. Members are invited to endorse proposals 1 to 5. I will move a resolution at a council meeting to amend the relevant rules of ROP. Members are also invited to approve proposals 6 to 8, and the relevant proposed amendments to HR in Appendixes 4 to 6. Thank you. Now we have seven members who have indicated that they would like to speak on the item. Two minutes each. Depending on the time, there may be a second round. Uh, Dr. Priscilla Leung. Yes, Chair. First, I would like to say that I support the amendments to the rules of procedures. This is um, long overdue. In 2002, when we had someone who threw the first banana, the crop over the three uh, legis the, the next um, three legislative sessions have been discussing how we could improve the House rules. Now we have something called the um, we have some suggestions um, about the red card, yellow card system. However, it was not passed by the crop. We did not reach a consensus. Now I have been a member on three terms of the crop. I am very happy that we have finally achieved a breakthrough. I would like to tell the public this is an improvement to our rules so that we don't have to just rely on 
lenient uh, sanctions, for example, um, asking members to withdraw from the chamber or make a report, report to the police. When there are better house rules, the chairman presiding over the meeting can make a judgment so that for conflicts within a purview, within the business of LegCo, we can deal with it ourselves. Oh, there are people saying that um, it has always been like this. However, people have been abusing the loophole. They have been filibustering so that um, we were very inefficient, and also the House Committee has been paralyzed for half a year. That's why we have to change the rules at this time. According to um, what I've heard, people support these proposed amendments. Mr. Yu Si Wing. Thank you, Madam Chair. The opposition camp has been abusing the rules of procedure at the council meetings, finance committee meetings, house committee meetings, and other meetings. They've been trying to, um, uh, you know, disrupt the proceedings of our meetings, and they have been, you know, getting worse over the past few years. What are they trying to achieve? They were, or what were they trying to achieve? They uh, wanted government bills or funding proposals not to proceed, so the in public would then get the impression that government is uh, being incompetent, and then they would blame the government. And so, in the end, Hong Kong as a whole is uh, lagging behind other places in the region, in particular the mainland. So they uh, they they did what they did for a purpose. Now, with uh, the proposed amendments, uh, I hope the public will come to understand why there's need for these amendments. If they've been following the um, what's been happening at the council, they would uh, certainly support these amendments. But then I would say certain sanctions are rather harsh. Uh, for example, uh, suspension of service or the consequences of substantial service, and then the uh, remuneration arrangement and so on. I have uh, different views myself, but then I support the spirit of the proposal. At the same time, I would respect uh, the decision to be made by the council. We want the rules of procedures uh, to be better followed in future, and we don't want any uh, burn with us camp or other uh, members uh, to abuse the rules of procedure and um, paralyze the council. We don't want to uh, see what's happened in the past. Uh, the council was reduced to a lame duck, and I think we should seize upon this opportunity to resolve these matters. Thank you, Mr. Tony Chair. Well, the uh, Bermuda's Us Camp has always been uh, abusing the rules of procedures. Uh, procedure, so we're not able to. We were not able to conduct uh, meetings, and there was uh, uh, indiscriminate filibustering, livelihood issues, uh, especially funding proposals and bills related to livelihood issues, were uh, not uh, able to be passed. So that's why I support um, this exercise to pluck the loopholes and prevent abuse. I'm grateful to members of CROP for their hard work. But then during the consultation, I have um, given my views on certain aspects. For example, limiting the uh, debate time limit. Now, uh, 2J, um, you know, for substitute legislation or members' amendments. Uh, these uh, items have legislatively fair, and they could be complex. If we limit the speaking time to just five minutes, I would say it's too short. And then 2L is the same, because these are also um, you know, items with uh, legislative effects such as censoring the uh, chief executive or motions under the basic law. These are uh, major issues. I would say five minutes of speaking time is too short. Especially uh, already there's a limit on the total duration of a debate. So we shouldn't just um, reduce uh, all speaking time limit from 15 minutes to 5 minutes. Can we say make it 7 minutes instead? And then uh, pro uh, Proposal 8 is said that uh, uh, there should be at least three members um, 
indicating their wish to set up a bills committee or subcommittee uh, at the con at the house committee meeting before such a bills committee or subcommittee would be set up. But what if uh, a member is unable to attend a meeting, but then the member may have um, write may have sent in writing to the uh, chair his or her demand to set up a bills committee or subcommittee? Would it be allowed? I think it should be. Uh, in principle, though, I support all the uh, propo uh, proposed amendments. Well, uh, well, uh, in response to Mr. Say, yes, you could write in to say, or you could just ask other member to say that uh, uh, um, he that you want to set up a bills committee or subcommittee is possible, Mr. Horace Jung. Now, the rules of procedure is about. Uh, a set of rules that will allow the council to operate uh, efficiently and smoothly. Uh, you know, you can't say whether the rules are strict or not really. If all members uh, observe order, there's no need for rules of procedure and everything will go uh, smoothly. But then as you could see in the past few years, you've seen all sorts of really um, bizarre scenarios and, and totally ridiculous scenarios in this council. So in the past, we had a rules of procedure for gentlemen. It was on the liberal side, and now, given the um, what happened, it is necessary to make amendments. So that's why I support the amendments put forward by the DAB. Uh, for example, um, sanctions against uh, grossly disorderly conduct. Now we've seen what happened. Um, uh, members uh, uh, could do whatever they wanted, and then they, they were just evicted from the meeting, and that's all. And uh, members of the public weren't happy about that. Now there was a uh, f someone from the Singapore in Parliament, he observed our debate at the public gallery and he asked me a question. And he he said he couldn't follow exactly what we were debating. And I said, it's true, some people debated for the sake of debate, of a debate. So that's why uh, sometimes uh, um, people were saying things that uh, meant nothing. It was just meant to store things. So that's why there's a need to make amendments to the rules. And then uh, why wouldn't we allow motions uh, without notice anymore at meetings? Well, you know uh, why. You and I are district councillors, Madam Chair, so district councillors don't allow that. How come Electrical allow that? I asked that question when I first joined because uh, um, I wouldn't know what uh, the content of a motion without notice would be even by the time we to proceed to vote. So that's why I think uh, it's not right to have that. And then there's another pro amendment that I proposed for motions, uh, members' motions um, under the basic law and uh, powers and privileges ordinance. Why am I moving the order of these motions? Now, I'm not saying that we should ban these motions, so don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that we shouldn't allow these uh, motions to jump the queue. We should make sure that other motions have an equal chance to be considered. That's the whole pur purpose of my proposed amendment. Thank you. Ms. Ellis Mack. The FTU supports the uh, proposed amendments moved by uh, proposed by Crop, as detailed in the paper, because uh, we have all seen in the past that um, you know um, Lashko was brought to a standstill; it couldn't function properly, and it's affected the development of Hong Kong. Now, um, the sanction proposal against um, grossly disorderly conduct of members. Well, actually, many in the community have been have asked how come these people could just leave the meeting without consequence, because uh, they, if they were evicted from meetings, they could just go for coffee. Uh, how come that's allowed? And so we're just responding to public um, uh, demands. And also, uh, Proposal 3 is about powers of a committee chairman in office to deal with uh, business. This is just to you know, clarify certain ambiguities in the rules of procedure. And that's why I would support these amendments. But uh, as the paper mentions, it's just the first batch of amendments. Also, I believe there will be a second batch of amendments. I hope CROP will work faster and put forward the second batch of amendments because we see that these amendments could actually deal with some um, 
pro problems we've seen in the past about um, the council being charged and so on. But of course, these amendments couldn't deal with all other matters such as the election of chairman and so on. So if there is a second batch of amendments to uh, further improve upon the uh, P ROP and HRL, it would be nice. So the FG would support these amendments. Mr. Tommy Cheng. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Liberal Party is all for the amend proposed amendments. Of course, um, um, some members of the Liberal Party uh, have raised questions. Uh, so for example, just a member asked whether a five minute speaking time is enough. But I think if we could be precise, we should be, be precise as we speak. Now, of course, um, Members may have uh, different views on uh, or, or mi uh, minor differences on these amendments. I appeal to members to support these amendments. I've been in this council for 21 years. I've seen that much of our time was wasted. Now we're just borrowing from the rules of the British Parliament initially. It's like a gentleman's club. Uh, there would be mutual respect and you wouldn't go overboard. But unfortunately, in the past four, five years, or even past eight or ten years, we see that the Baron of Uscam wanted to bring everybody down, so they would they would do anything. Now, um, as the chair of a meeting, uh, is always about a balance between members' right to speak and the efficient operation of the council. I believe the public do have certain expectations of uh, this council, you know, for our council meetings, committee meetings, and so on. Now, we should be allowed time to ask questions, to express views, but then we shouldn't be dragging business on f forever so there is no more efficiency to speak of uh, for the council to operate. Thank you. So the Liberal Party supports the amendments. Mrs. Regina Yip, the New People's Party also supports uh, these amendments. I've been in this council for 13 years now. I can see that uh, you know the the situation in this council is deteriorating over time. You know that people hurling bananas, uh, gla drink glasses. They shouted from the seats. They uh, charged at the president's uh, podium. Um, you know, knocking down glasses and so on. You know, such behavior should not be allowed at all. And that's, we have seen far too many incidents of abuse of procedures. You know, they just need to, they just needed to raise a point of order, and then the whole meeting had to be halted, or, or they might uh, talk about irrelevant issues during debates. Now we actually don't have much time each year to, uh, uh, for. To consider various issues that we have the to consider the budget, we have to consider policy address, and then there are various holidays, Chinese New Year holidays, New Year holidays, and even a two week break for the two congresses and so on. So we need to make the most of time available because we're spending a lot of public uh, taxpayers' money. So as, that's why I'm all for abandoning the. ROP and our HR so we could improve our efficiency, and then we could pass all important bills in a timely manner. You might recall for the medical registration ordinance, um, this has uh, straddled two terms of government. So even for the not uh, so complicated issues, we couldn't res uh, resolve them. So that's why uh, we need these amendments to resume uh, efficient operation and orderly operation of the council. Just now, six members have spoken. If any mom if any other member would like to speak, please press the button. After members' speeches, we will invite members to endorse proposals one to five. If these proposals are endorsed, then the chairman of CROP will move a motion at the council meeting on the 24th of March to um, implement these proposals. If the relevant proposals are passed, then um, the proposed 
consequential amendments to the relevant rules of HR will be submitted to the House Committee for members' consideration. Concerning Proposal 6 to 8, if members approve these proposals, then the relevant proposed amendments will be implemented, and the Secretariat will make the relevant amendments to the rules. Are there any other members who would like to speak? Uh, Mr. Paul Chair, any reply? Thank you, Chair, and thank you, members, as well as the Secretariat. They have done a lot of work, and they have been very efficient, so that's these proposed amendments can be uh, moved timely. I have, no, I have nothing else to add. Thank you. If there are no other members who would like to speak concerning the paper, then I would like to invite members to endorse, endorse the proposals. All the members who have spoken support the proposals. So proposals one to five, for those who would endorse these proposals, please raise your hand. Those for the proposals, uh, please raise your hand. Those against, please raise your hand. Uh, no members object. Proposals six to eight, um, any members of those for um, Proposal 6 to 8, please raise your hand. Those against, please raise your hand. No objection. Unanimously um, approved. Concerning the endorsed proposals 1 to 5, the Chairman of CROP will m move a motion at the Council meeting on the 24th of March for amendments. Um, the deadline for giving notice is Wednesday, 17th of March. Now, proposal 6 to 8 have been approved. So the relevant amendments to the to the House rules have come into effect. I invite the Secretariat to make the amendments. And also, next Monday, the new House rules will uh, be effective. Mr. Porsche, other business? Uh, AOB Chair, I would like to make use of this opportunity to thank our uh, uh, Clark, uh, the SG, uh, who is going to uh, retire um, after today. So I would like to thank him for his um, work. Today, this is um, the this is um, Oder, the secretary, uh, the S DSG's uh, last House committee meeting. I thank um, Oder for his contribution to the Legislative Council over the years. I think all members who have worked with Oder would appreciate his contribution and also um, his time. I wish uh, the Deputy Secretary General, um, Ms. Ode Ms. Odelia, um, a, um, a happy retirement life. If there are no AOB, then um, I declare today's uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you.